What up, what up, what up, what up, beautiful people? It is Saturday, good afternoon, and I just wanted to share what we're getting into out here. I just wanted to show the spread before I begin to speak on the messages that came out. This is the one you really want to pay attention to, right? Because these cards, these five were for you. The first five that I shared are for me, right? Because I just um, heated up a new deck and it was my first kind of like reading. And so this one is for you, for us, for the world. And so how it's going to be read is across possession, ancestors, etoile. Oya, Oyate. Possession, ancestors, etoile, Oya, Oriate. What up? What up, what up, what up, what up? So I wanted to come on here and it's been a while since I've done a reading. It's been a while since I've done divination since I've, for myself and then for others in general, it's just been a while because, you know, life happens. Life happens and I really, I like to be alone when I am communing. Like when I am communing with the ancestors or my Orisha or, you know, the goddesses and gods and loas. And so, but this day, this week, one day this week, I came home and I felt this pull, this pull toward the deck to like, okay, we ready. We ready for you. We ready. We want to know where you're at. We want to check in with you. And then I felt strong enough because this is energy work, right? Spirit work is energy work. I felt strong enough to come on here and and do a little message for you. So when I came home that day and I was um, about to do my reading, I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling, I'm breathing my ache into my deck and I'm ready and I'm warming them up and doing all the things. And cards leaped out of the deck. They just leaped out and I was like, oof. It was with some immediacy. And I knew that I needed to slow down, stop, and see who was trying to talk to me, what they were saying, and what I needed to know. And so I have five cards that came out for me, Alicia, La Santera, um, as this confirmation of my practice and my process and what I am supposed to be doing, which I thought was wonderful, because no coincidence that the first card I got was Santero. Boom. That is self-explanatory. What you see here is this beautiful Santero in the Santeria. So this deck that I'm using, real quick, let you know, side note, the ADD in me. Um, the deck that I have is a voodoo tarot deck. And it's divided into sections. So it has cards from Congo, Rada, Petro, Santeria. And yeah, let me see what else. And then the houses, right? And then the houses that are in a, a common deck, a common tarot deck, right? I'm obsessed with the Rada, Petro, and Santeria in the, in the Congo cards because I feel like they're so connected to my religious practice as a Santera. And so I love seeing the messages in this deck that even though it's a Loa, they mention in the reading the connection to the Orisha, which I think is pretty dope. And you'll see in the reading that I did for you how that connects, right? So Santero. Santero, Santero, Santero. At some point I am going to prop... Um, I'm going to prop 
this phone so that I can. So the messages for the, the Santero deck, what I thought, which I thought was really dope, was that in the image, right? In the image, you have this Santero who's offering herbs to um, the Bata drum. And the Bata drum is um, a holy, sacred drum that is played to honor the Orisha, to call forth the Orisha, to bring in the Orisha, to honor the Orisha, right? Um, and so this card also represents like earth. And so in the card, the message for, was for me was about um, my strong connection to the religion, right? So it was confirmation, right? So Moyuba Olofi, Moyuba Loru, Moyuba Lodumare, right? The creators of the universe who guide me, who guide my mind, right? My ori, my crown, my spirit. And so that was just a confirmation that the first card that came out for me was that of a santero. Then there was the message of Agüe, which I thought was really dope because uh, the, this card is really beautiful, right? Here we have um, these people on a boat, on a journey, right? And it represents Olokum. And Olokum in Santeria and Lukumi lives at the bottom of the ocean and is who keep is the keeper of secrets of all of life's secrets you know and so it's where this card represents where the sky meets the sea and this is about the journey this is about safe travels this is about yes alicia this is confirmation do it do what you do what you were supposed to do do what was in your ita your messages for you your life force and sail on boo I thought that, that was beautiful. Then I got La Baleine. This right here scared me. I was like, this shit is massive. What does it look like to you? What do you see in this image? What do you see? This is straight up Congo, right? So this also is reference to Oloku. My favorite fun Oloku. My fere funo locum. Um, this whale, this image of this like whale that gives birth to all. It's the vast world womb. That's what the message in the in the um, in the deck says. It is the vast world womb. And womb, the womb, W O M B, comes up a lot in this reading for me and for you, right? About this giving birth. This giving birth to things, but also keeping things secret. Keeping things for yourself. What lives at the bottom of the ocean, nobody knows. Nobody has ever been to the bottom of the ocean. Those secrets are very well kept. And for me, um, that message of, yes, give to the world. Because a lot of what I do, just in these readings, in my life as a teaching artist, as a teacher, as a workshop facilitator, as the writing midwife is I'm constantly giving, giving, giving. This card reminds me that there are some things that are mine. And in the religion, as a Santera, there are things that are mine that I won't be sharing or posting because my religious practice is sacred, right? And so what I can share, I will share. Then the next person, the next manifestation and representation that I received came, um, it was a Hrada card. Hrada, 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 Hrada. Hungang. Hungang. And this Hungan is also playing the Bata drum. And the Hungan is also a priest. So that was like double for me, double for me as a priestess, right? And so, um, if you look at this image, those are like sunbeams coming out of the drum. And this Hungan is very peaceful, very joyful. And he has gone into possession. So the spirits 
a spirit has entered him and he has left the visible world, right? He has entered the invisible world where the secrets will be revealed. And that for me is the readings, right? Like it's not me coming out here and telling you what I think this, this, and this, and this. It is spirit coming through me with messages for you um, that either apply or don't. It really is that simple. Like you'll hear a message and you'll be like, yo, preach. I feel that deeply. That's speaking the truth. Like for me, this is a conversation. Com this is a confirmation of my gifts, of my gifts, right? Um, and it's in this car, this Hungan is also compared in the book to Chang'o, you know, in that I'm being called to be courageous and strong and steadfast, right? That even though there's a storm coming, I am guided, I'm protected, which I thought was beautiful. I'm only sharing the readings, the readings that I got from me with you because I just thought it was amazing and I wanted to share, but I won't be doing that, right? I, I will always share what the reading is for you, but I thought it was a wonderful confirmation because, you know, when, if you're someone who is looking for like spiritual counsel or someone who just wants to connect or learn about the religion, because I know a lot of people who are genuinely interested in, you know, the divine, who are genuinely interested in messages del masaya, who are interested in learning how they can honor their ancestors, how they can connect to Mother Earth, how they can tap into their own gifts. And what I love about not just being a Santera, right? Because that has come later in life. I was always a priestess. It became official once I went through my process of initiation and learning and study and all of that. But years and years, and I mean, I was born a priestess. I was born someone who had gifts. And why I share the, this confirmation is because I think it's really important to feel like you trust the source. Like, who is the person that's giving the message and do you trust this person? Do you believe this person is the real deal? And it's important. It's important, like, to do your research, to get receipts, to really feel like this person si sabe, eta si sabe. I remember, and I haven't, I don't know, I'm not sure if I wrote about this. I don't remember if I wrote about this, but I remember when I, when I um, was crowned. When I was crowned and I went through, you know, I left my cuarto de santo and I went through all of the rituals that came after that beautiful event. And I went to, um, I went to a church and I went in to, and I was lighting a count, I was lighting a candle and I was praying and this woman walked up to me and she's like, whoa. Because she could feel, she could feel the freshness of me being born, right? Because I was born in the religion during that process. And, but also, you, you know, what, what's beautiful about being a yabo being a yawo, being this baby, is that people love a yawo because they're so fresh and, and you want to be close to this person because, you know, it might be so long since they were a yawo, you know. So I know a lot of elders who really love, you know, the yawo sita. And, you know, and so she was really lovely and she was just that confirmation of who crowned you did a beautiful job. I feel I feel the power off of your body without touching me, which I thought was dope. Um, yeah. And then the last card that came for me was a Petro card. A Petro card. And um, Hunsi. Yo, the card, yo. Look at this card, yo. 
What do you see? What do you feel? Right? What do you feel? Fuego. <laughs> Tremendo fuego. Um, so, it's a fire card, period. You know, and it represents love and ambition and enthusiasm and vengeance. Hmm. Oof. But also rapid change. And that's what I'm feeling. That's what brought me to the cards. That's one of the cards that jumped out. Like, jumped out at my feet. Like, are you ready? Recójate. Recójate que no fuimos. Pack it up, pack it up, move it out. And so the message for me in this card, this, this kind of, this reading for me was about my spiritual vision and about mastery. And um, that's all. That's all I want to share about that. And now I'm going to get into what came up for you, my dears. Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. You ready? I don't think you ready, y'all. I don't think you ready. Possession. So the way this deck is laid out, right? It's this way, this way, and it represents the crossroads, right? And so this is the east. This represents the future. This is number one. Number two card represents the present, right now, who you are today in this moment. The third car, card, the west, represents the past. It could be recent past or it could be years ago past. Then the fourth card is the visible world. Also like kind of now, like these are messages for now. And then the fifth card is the invisible, the invisible world. And that is el más allá, right? The invisible world, meaning our ancestors, the beyond. You with me? Crossroads. So the first card that comes up is possession. Possession. All right. And I made notes because this is a brand new deck. And in the name of transparency, we are learning together. But I will absolutely be giving my insight into what I feel in my body this message is saying to us, right? As a community. So possession represents strength and lust, okay? In the religion, I was thinking, when I saw the card possession, you know, you see this image and I don't know what you feel. I don't know if you feel terrified. But I remember going to one of my first sort of drummings and my first events, and you know, where people would get montao. And I've gone to many, many types of events that um, someone receives a spirit. The spirit enters them in one way or, or another. Whether that be División 21, whether that be um, la, uh, la, la Ocha, you know, Santería, whether it be um, Gaga, whether it be Tocando Palo at, a, at an event. And so one of the things that used to terrify me was that I've always been afraid of being monta. Like I was always afraid of that. I was always afraid of a spirit entering me. And what I love about this being the first card that comes up for us dealing with, you know, this is speaking about the future is it's telling us not to fear possession and not necessarily possession in the way I'm speaking about it or describing it in terms of the religion. Um, because if you don't know, I mean, people tend to fear what they don't know, but if you don't know, how can you know? Right. And so possession happens through movement. Usually I believe that possession in Palo Gaga enters through the feet. I feel that. I feel that in my heart. I I feel it. I feel that it, it rises through your body and you are no longer you and a spirit has come and that spirit is free. Have you, I don't know, 
this might be brand new to you, but for those of you who know, you know. And for those of you who know the people who actually legitimately get down with the get down, you know when it's real and when it's not. Because the messages that come when, when someone has received a spirit, when someone has been blessed with receiving a spirit, it's phenomenal. Because that message is just for you, for you from a higher place. Um, and so there's a freedom that happens with possession. And this card, the message in this card for, for you in terms of the future is about not fearing possession. And it's connected to your personality, right? It's saying that the card, it's warning us that we must be careful of possession as it relates to our personality and limited sense of self, like being comfortable being where we are and not open to being possessed with something new, something greater. That's what we're talking about when we talk about possession in this reading, right? You're terrified of change, but change is good. This possession is about allowing something new to enter us, to propel us forward, right? And what else did I write? That possession allows us to be free, yo. So get free. All right, the next card is your present, your right now, your today, ancestors. Anytime I see anything having to do with ancestors, I I get very excited, very, very excited. Um, this image are loas on a float, and they are throwing down these like necklaces of gold that turn into snakes, and... They are basically, it's like offerings to the ancestors. And so in our reading, remember that second card is your present, your right now. It's about respect and it's about honoring the ancestors. It's about saying their name. Like none of us would be here without them. None of us would have the life and the freedoms and the liberties that we have without them. Without the people who came before us, the people who risked their lives, the people who died on ships. None of us would be who we are without them. And so it is right to give them thanks and give them praise as often as we can. We out here, you know, living in this world, wanting to rep this, wanting to rep that. It is beautiful to stop for a moment and remember our Egun. And so this card is about that. It's about saying, wait, 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 wait. You think that you have all of this because of you? Our ancestors are saying they are with us always, that they love us, that they want us to remember them, to never forget them. And they want us to honor them in ritual. Whatever that means for you, right? Like I come from a practice where everything that we do starts with the ancestors, with an offering for the ancestors. Every ritual, every, 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 every ritual. In my house, when I service, because I serve, I service, when I say I service my altars, I am serving them. And I serve my egun first. Just like when I serve my orisha, el egua eats first, my egun eat first, because I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for everything that I have and everything that I am. And so as you explore whatever spiritual practices you're into, um, never forget where you come from. That's really it. That's really it. That's that message about, you know, our ancestors saying, this, this here and now, Y'all are out here playing games and not saying thank you. So, bueno, no fui yo que lo dije. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. Um, Zetoile. Zetoile. What a beautiful card, right? What do you see there? Zetoile means star. Check me out knowing French, little, you know, Creole, speaking a little Haitian, not at all. I want to learn though. I want to learn. Zetoile. You see the stars. You see the womb. 
You see the baby sucking its thumb. This card is about, this card is your destiny. This card is your destiny. And it's connected to the past. So remember how the crossroads meet? So this is your past. And so what are the messages? What are the messages? What are the messages? What are the messages? It's a twelve. It's a twelve. Um, it's clearing the road. It's clearing the road. And one of the lines that I loved in the deck is that the, the author of the deck says that the card represents the womb, W-O-M-B, the womb of magical birth. And asks us to allow for direct communication with our destiny. When we fall into the darkness, the author talks about the darkness, the dark night of the soul. Whatever that means for you, right? It's warning us to be weary of the darkness. The dark night of the soul where our destiny gets lost. Poof. Where we lose it. Um, it is reminding us that when we talk about the past, we were born with it. So it's reminding us that we are being called to connect with our destiny. Otherwise, we will lose it forever. That there was a moment that we were in limbo, that there was a road that was blocked. But look at how we got to where we are today. It's reminding us of how we got unblocked. How did we move past the perceived obstacles? And it's telling us to move toward our, our destiny, yo. Whatever that means for you. This, de this deck is crazy powerful. I was scared of it for a long time. I say I was charging it for a, for a while, but at the same time, I knew that this shit right here was going to blow my mind with like knowledge and connecting to what I practice today. And so our destiny. So possession, ancestors, zetoile, all connected to our life purpose why we're here and what we're here to do. And then it brings us to mi madre, Oya. Ma ferefun Oya. You see Oya? All the scraps of cloth, the lightning in her hand, la dueña del cementerio, on top of a tomb in the cemetery, Eggplants are her, are hers. There's a lot I can say about Oya because she's my mother and I love her. But I'm going to speak to you about the cards as it relates to you. Okay. Oya straddles the world of living and the world of dead. She is the one that guards the cemetery and allows for those, grants them to enter. And so one of the lines that the author wrote in this deck was that the womb, W-O-M-B, and the tomb, T-O-M-B, the womb and the tomb are held in perfect balance. Birth, life, and death, right? Perfect balance. And so she is here to remind us also about our ancestors, about our dead. And she is here to tell us that rapid change is coming. Rapid change. Rapid change. You know, she represents that card, that fourth card is the um the visible world, like the here and the now, things are happening right now. Like if you if you feel that you are moving, that you feel more inspired than you have been in months, years, it's there's a reason for that. That's all, yeah. The winds of change, that hurricane, that cycle, muévete. Because if you don't move, you are going to be lost in the fucking, in the debris. And the last card... 
is also a Santeria card. And I thought this was great. I thought that this was wonderful. It was interesting how, you know, for me, it was the, the voodoo cards were at the center of the crossroads. And then the north and south cards for me, the top and bottom cards were Santeria. So such a, a beautiful confirmation of, um, of the process and what you're here to, to listen to. Oriate. You know, the card itself is ref in reference to Excalibur, right? The sword and the stone and pulling it out and, you know, you are worthy to be a king. That's pretty much what the inspiration was for that card. And so that card is here to tell you that you are competent, that you are trustworthy, that you can be relied on that you can do this, that you are worthy of being a king or queen, that you were born that way, that you are blessed, that you are guided, and all the cards confirm that, right? Your ancestors are like, we got you, you know? The possession card was telling you to trust, allow it to enter you, what wants to be, what's, wants to be born through you, what's sitting in your womb, <sighs> waiting to be born, allow it to come through and it's exciting this is an exciting time i feel it i feel it you know i feel it for you but i feel it for me you know because tremendous change has happened just in the past few days for me like quick today today too like i feel like the ideas are rising like like incredibly incredibly and so yeah that's your reading, family. ¿Qué más te puedo decir? Take it and run, yo. Your destiny. You were destined to be something. You were destined to walk with something. And not just destined for it. You were born with it. You were born with it. And your ancestors are saying, we stay walking with you. You may not see us or hear us or feel us, but we, we stand over you while you sleep. We walk, with, we walk with you in the street and when you think you're alone, you're not alone. You're not alone. And so I hope that you enjoyed that reading. Definitely leave me comments and questions. And if there's anything that you want me to ask, if there's any question that you want me to ask my deck, my Orisha, send that to me. I'd be happy to meditate on it, you know, and if I feel it, I'll ask it, you know. And that's it. That's your reading. Peace.